I got started in this because uh, I wrote a great circle program for financial affairs. Vancouver was flying to Boston to play the Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> and uh, I ran it a day after doing an SVN update, and uh, I got something like uh, 500 times 10 to the 14th kilometers. And uh, what had happened, of course, was some of the op codes inside this thing were uh, adjusting on the fly. They change this thing about four times a day, so you can see that. Uh, I don't know what revision I'm using here. It's forever under construction. So, uh, <laughs> that's the way it goes when you're developing, I guess. So anyway, this was my great circle program that uh, the opcode I had, which was changed nautical miles to kilometers, suddenly switched to astronomical units. Did you say program in class? Anyway, so next slide. So why do we need an assembler? Well, because this thing changes about four times a day, and, and uh, I don't really want to type in one of these 400-line programs by hand, so I wanted to do it with a, a computer. Um, we give the, the ability to do some library management by writing um, functions, and you can put them together in different combinations and blow them into the flash. Um, obviously, we want some documentation and comments in this thing. And uh, late in the process, uh, Paul decided that he wanted some symbolic preprocessing capability. And we'll talk about that a little later and construct what that really meant. So it was one Perl script that does both of this stuff. You can assemble um, ASCII code into the binary image that you blow into the calculator. You can also recover your image from the calculator and just assemble it back into assembly, or sorry, source code that you can use. Um, yeah, let's go on. It's, it's written in Perl because I'm a hardware ASIC guy and we use Perl, so all you Java people, maybe I'll get around to doing that some bit. There is a, um, a Windows version as well, compiled from the Perl. It's big and it's clunky, but it does have the same features. But you don't need a Perl package, which is maybe a couple hundred megabytes on your computer if you don't ever use Perl. Anyway, so this is a simple little uh, ASCII script, and ironically, on the museum in the last two weeks, mod was a big uh, topic for some reason. And I'm afraid it was me that brought the mod thing up uh, several months ago and kind of got um, some of the opcodes changed in in the machine. This is a real mod in my terms, which has uh, is normalized between zero and the modulus, not the remainder that's actually in the machine. So this thing does a modulus and comes back to the real number. It doesn't matter what the program does, it's just a little example of what goes into the assembler. So you would write this in your, your editor. You, uh, um, we can put a couple of doohickeys in here to make it a little easier to see where your, some of your things are. You can obviously put comments in here. Um, you can have line numbers or not, doesn't really matter. If they're there, they better be three digits or the, the tool's gonna barf on them but they don't need to be there. Um, the reason they're there is because some people like to count steps and yeah, I don't. So an example of the thing being run, um, in this case I've got the, the compiled Windows executable version. Um, this is the source code we're gonna fire into the thing and we get a binary image out the, the back. This thing tells you a bit about what's going on. Um, one really important thing is, since this thing changes dynamically, the SVN, the, the project, um, what do you call it? The provision control system that the projects run on is, a, is SVN, so there's a number attached to every build, and the tool will report that. It's probably a good idea to jot that down if you're ever going to use this thing again, and I'll show you why in a bit later. Um, the output here can be any name you want, but in order to, to link to Marcus's tool, uh, the emulator will actually slurp in a very specific set of names, uh, replace X with 0 through 9 at the moment, I think, and the emulator will automatically recognize this thing and read it in for you. Um, so when you run that thing, what pops out 
is uh, absolutely indecipherable uh, chunk of stuff, which is actually a set of opcode. So this is the uh, the checksum, CRC. Um, it's not next word. It's actually next step. This is the opcode for label. My thing's dying. Uh, label mod. Um, and the remainder, I don't know if you remember what the program was, but that's, those are the first few outputs. Anyway, next thing, we, uh, we can take that same binary image, we can, um, there's a dash DIS there for disassembly, we can take the image and we'll pop out the original source code. Thank you very much. So it'll pop out the original source code without the comments, unfortunately, and it'll give you a little bit more information about what it did. Um, go ahead. Yeah, that's a, the opposite, operative thing. Obviously, you're losing the, the source code comments, but that was the original code we put in. This is what we recovered. So, you know, it's probably enough that you can actually do something with if you uh, had to recreate it. So, for library management, you can, you can write up a whole bunch of these little ditties, if you wish, and stack a whole bunch of them on the command line, and it will build it all into one minor image, and the only thing you have to worry about is staying under this 506 word limit which is imposed by the calculator uh, flash page sums. Um, but from in one uh, flash page, you can uh, execute subroutines in any one of the other flash pages or any one of or the, the, the dynamic RAM, that uh, static RAM actually, that the uh, the software is loaded into. Um, this is a bit of a preprocessor thing that we did quite late in the process here. Uh, its output is standard assembly language stuff that goes into the assembler. It has a nice feature. I don't know um, how many people have written programs for this thing. It has, uh, for looping, these two back and skip instructions, which skip a number of steps, or a go-to, which goes to a specific label well, this tool will allow you to um, replace all these things with a jump statement, and it'll go. Uh, it will. The tool will figure out what back had to be, or it'll figure out how many steps back you had to go, or how many um, skip forward you had to go. Um, we'll skip all this stuff. So here's a typical little program. This was to skip five to go to this. DSZ instruction. Um, now, that's great, but what happens if you got back 68? Well, I don't, I can't count that many things. You know, I ran out of fingers. Um, can we go back up one? Okay. Um, most people would have done a label for these things. Labels actually consume more space in some cases. Go ahead. Now, here's the other problem. What happens if you suddenly have to stick another statement in here? You're, you're a skip five now is broken because it's going to end up there. Well, this new tool, I think we can go ahead. This new tool um, allows you to replace what would have been a skip five, I think it was there, with this, um, what do I call that, a pseudo instruction and an ASCII label. And here's the, the target of the label. Give that to the tool. It'll figure out, hey, I should put skip five in there. It will do that replacement for you. Um, so now we come back and we say, ooh, we needed a, a bug fix here. Well, the tool would have automatically detected that and changed that skip five that would have been replaced here with skip six. So it makes program maintenance a lot easier. Uh, we'll just go ahead with this one. Um, this was another feature that Paulie wanted. He wanted to be able to put easier way to put ASCII strings in the assembler. Um, the old way is kind of like this where you have this alpha uh, key plus the, the single character. This alpha with a quoted string is actually fairly new. But with this, you can give that to this tool and it'll spit out all of this nonsense, which is a lot easier to put in. Um, this is how you run the preprocessor. You basically run the same assembler, but just add another key to the thing. You can also run it as a standalone tool. It's another script in its, of itself, and it'll spit out this assembly language, which can be fed in to the original assembler. And you might do that if you had a mixture of non-PP. PP is just preprocessor. 
He had stuff that wasn't capable of being run through the preprocessor. Sorry. And a bunch of other stuff you could give it to this form. But most people will use the PP, the dash PP one. Um, this is key that when uh, the assembler is actually, or the, when the calculator is constructed by Marcus and Polly, things change internally all the time. So this, this um, assembler tool is table driven. The table is actually generated as part of the build process of the calculator and saved out somewhere. This tool will go and look that table up um, in these locations, either where, where you can specify it, where you're running the program or where the, the actual script resides. This is the, the default location. There are reasons to use the other ones, so, and I'll show you that in just a second. done really quickly. Um, so this, you can migrate programs between uh, revisions of the calculator. This is why I wrote the tool. So my astronomical units here weren't going to happen again. So you can read the stuff back out of the calculator from an older SVN, uh, recreate, um, go ahead, recreate the ASCII source, and reassemble it with a current SVN table. Um, and this is essentially the process. Recover the data, recover the program from the calculator, disassemble it with an old SVN table that you down date, set up date, and then reassemble with the current table. And now my astronomical units will be nautical miles to kilometers again. I'll find out how far Vancouver had to fly to Austin. Um, Perl is where this thing is written, but we do have this Windows EXE. The Perl is always um, current. I don't always get around to compiling this thing. Um, up. It's quite slow the first time it's run because it has to decompress a whole bunch of stuff and then it caches it so that's uh, able to be used. It is big on that decompression. So each one of these images starts up with seven megabytes and ends up with 15 megabytes. So mm, I don't actually like running this stuff, so I run the Perl. Um, Bruce put this thing online, so if you wanted to try it, I think he's got an old version right now that we'll probably update fairly soon, you give it code and it will email back the result. So if you don't want to actually put it on your machine, you could try this online. Um, as, as Marcus said, some of the actual internal um, portions of the calculator are assembled using this tool. Uh, it saves space and actually re uh, improves readability a bit for this extra long portion inside the calculator. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And that's it. So here's a little anagram you might want to figure out. But for me, uh, this thing spews revisions about 15 times a day. So uh, actually, if you want, the answer is written over there in red. So you'll have to find that for yourself. That's it. That's a lot.